Hideyuki Kikuchi's novels introduce us to a fantastical world of vampires and mutants. The author sticks to the true essence of how vampires are and then builds over it. This gives us, the readers, access to a world where vampires have reached the pinnacle of technological advancement and then found themselves stuck in a standstill after reaching their peak. Experimentations in technology to aid advancement also comes with the creation of several hybrids, and Vampire Hunter D himself is the greatest example of it, considering he is part human and part vampire. Known as a Dampier, the Vampire Hunter eventually finds an unusual partner in what seems to be a homunculus that becomes a part of his left hand. But this hand is not just there to be a companion to the Dampier, although it does a splendid job at that as well. Left Hand knows that D is exceedingly strong, but it seldom intervenes. D fights his battles on his own, but there's only so much you can do by yourself. When push comes to shove, everyone needs a helping hand. When D reaches a dead end, he finds that helping hand in his left hand, who is more than willing to bail his host out of impossible situations. In today's video, we will talk about how and why this sentient left hand exists. The left hand as a homunculus, the origin of the term, its association with alchemy, and its influence on fictional literature. So what is a homunculus? The term formally refers to a miniature human being. Throughout history, its visual representation has been small statues made using clay. These figures also possess uncanny proportions, with faces that often resemble caricatures. The heads can be too big for the body, which makes homunculi appear cartoonish. The limbs can be too long, the facial features exaggerated, and, more more often than not, the palms and toes can be bigger than the proportions of the arms and legs. However, these are not hard and fast rules that determine whether something is a homunculus or not. The concept is a lot more versatile, and it all starts with alchemy. Alchemy is the predecessor to modern-day chemistry. In medieval times, it was believed that the transmutation of matter concerned with converting base metals would eventually lead to the development of a universal elixir. With reference to the homunculus, theories from historical biology also come into play to add a basis to its existence. The popular old-school biological theory of preformationism states that every organism develops from a pre-existing miniature version of itself or its species. It was believed that combining the theory of preformationism and alchemic experimentations could help birth the homunculi. Based on that, a key element in the creation of a homunculus is the fact that it does not naturally exist. It has to be created. The homunculus made its first appearance in alchemical writings sometime between 1493 and 1541 CE. Swiss physician and alchemist Paracelsus mentioned in his writings the manner in which he believed a homunculus could be created. It had to start with the natural decaying or putrefaction of the sperm of a man. It then had to be sealed in a gourd, which had to be transferred to the womb of a horse. After 40 days, the sperm would seemingly reach a stage where it would come to life and start to move by itself. At this point, the being that has come to life would resemble a man while having a transparent body. In the next step, this being had to be fed human blood to provide it with nutrition while it was inside the horse's womb. This would then continue for 40 weeks, and eventually, humanoid children would grow in the womb. But of course, these so-called children would be much smaller than the average human being. This idea of creating a homunculi gained traction during 16th century alchemy and eventually became a popular fictional figure in the 19th century. As a result, it has been present in many a literary work. We see this idea in action in Full Metal Alchemist, where fictional and fantastical alchemy, with a heavy dose of genocide and sinful characteristics, are combined to create homunculi. This is not a rule carved in stone, however, since the very first homunculus to exist in the story is a being that exists more naturally than artificially. Well, natural might not be the best word to describe it, but there are no records of the dwarf and the flask being artificially created, and instead, it is something that just happens to exist. These literary works have also evaded the pre-existing idea of how the body proportions of a homunculus should work. Writers have evaded the idea of creating caricatures of humans with unrealistically huge heads and focused on creating humanoid figures that are, in ways, not human enough. This brings us to the left hand in Vampire Hunter D. The hunter himself is neither human nor homunculus. He is a dampier. However, his left hand seems to have fused with a homunculus since it possesses a humanoid face with a mind of its own. In the movies, we are introduced to other Dampiers other than D himself, and none of them seem to have a sentient palm the way D does, which tells us how D's left hand isn't natural and that it is not something that comes with being a Dampier. This means that the homunculus has been artificially created. Because it is a separate being, it often acts as a companion to D, although their interactions are limited to the left hand talking by himself and engaging in monologues. And while D is quite powerful as a vampire hunter, 
and boasts a horde of superpowers, his left hand possesses several fantastical traits and tricks in his own arsenal as well. Whether he uses them to aid D or not in fights is up to the duo's personal wishes. The Origin of the Left Hand A 10,000 year old being and how he finds his best companion in a different species. The left hand's nature raises questions about its origin and creation, which are unfortunately very vague and seldom touched upon. Its symbiotic nature lets us know that the Dampier has acquired this being. What we do know is that prior to becoming a part of the Dampier, the left hand used to serve the sacred ancestor of the vampires. He is not the only homunculus, as the mutant Mashira is of the same species as left hand himself. Vampire Hunter D is set in a world where the nobles or the vampires have access to advanced technology that has allowed them to create mutants case in point being D's cybernetic horse. So the existence of the homunculi as a species is far from being far-fetched. We can also deduce that this homunculus has lived for over 10,000 years since it knows the Crystal Palace language, which is a language known to only those who have existed in the world over 10,000 years ago. At the same time, D is also believed to be approximately 10,000 years old. He used to be a conjoined twin and was born in the research facility of the Sacred Ancestor. This facility was home to several experimentations as you can already guess, which means that D may have met the homunculus within the facility itself. Mutants and demons were often used to create hybrids that went on to be known as Barbaroi. The left hand was seemingly one of them, and Count Dracula, or the sacred ancestor himself, had made this particular Barbaroi stronger than others with his experimentations. After the Dampier got rid of his conjoined twin, he was given the homunculus, who went on to become a symbiotic being to D as well as his partner. Why the left hand took residence in D, or why the homunculus homunculus was given to D is not known. The Dampier's connection with the sacred ancestor in this storyline has also been both absolute and vague at the same time. If he truly is the descendant of the sacred ancestor, as it has been implied, then it would make sense for the ancestor to offer the symbiote to the Dampier to strengthen him. He probably didn't expect that D would choose to kill the nobles instead of siding with them. However, D himself has stated in the 1985 film that he has no familial connection with the sacred ancestor, so there is no absolute answer as to why the left hand has become a part of D. Considering their ages and nature, the left hand is seemingly immortal unless killed by external sources. Taking the homunculi in fictional works into account, we can assume that these beings are capable of being one with a human soul or becoming home to a human soul, all without necessarily having a soul of their own. However, left hand has a personality that is quite developed. Whether he has a soul of his own or not is unknown, but it is not robotic or nonchalant to say the least. Between him and D, it is funny how the left hand is the one with the more upbeat personality. An unusual friendship. How the left hand and D complement one another in banter and battle alike. With left hand finding his new home in the Dampier's palm, the two have spent an overwhelmingly obscene amount of time together, thanks to their unusual physiologies, unparalleled strength, and, unfortunately, long lifespans. In fact, it has been the only living being that has been present by the lone wolf Dampier's side at all times. Not that it can choose not to be there, but you get the sentiment. Its sarcastic comments have added some comedic value to D's life, and it is renowned for having a personality that contrasts with the Dampier's nonchalant character. The left hand is more outgoing, more open to expressing its personal views and feelings, and prefers the path with the least resistance and obstacles. On the contrary, D seldom engages in interactions and makes moves that make his life more complicated than it should be. He, for lack of a better word, doesn't play it safe while the left hand is more careful. This also results in the left hand having to watch out for the well-being of not just himself, but D as well. When it comes to combat, that, the left hand seldom intervenes and lets D do the work. This equation seems to work perfectly with the duo since D is powerful enough to come out on top in almost every fight. However, if D does find himself in a situation where he's on the verge of death, left hand will step in. We see this when Count Magnus Lee's son Ray uses the time-bewitching incense of the Dampier to severely weaken him. He is then mortally wounded by a wooden stake and left in a comatose state. This also threatens his life since a nearby mutant is on the move to kill and consume D. With the Dampier out of action, left hand steps in to save his life, fend off the mutant, and reawaken D's consciousness. You can argue that the left hand's lifeline seemingly depends on D being alive, much like the equation between Migi and Shinichi from the anime Parasite, where Migi mostly tends to Shinichi for his own continued survival. On the contrary, the symbiote in Spider-Man can exist outside of its host and latch on to different hosts, which is why it becomes one with Eddie Brock after leaving Peter Parker's body. We don't know whether left hand is capable of that or not, but assuming he isn't, 
it makes sense for it to intervene when Dee's life is in danger. When it comes to their arsenal of superpowers, Left Hand possesses a different set of powers compared to Dee. He is not just an extension of the Dampier. For starters, it can place weak-minded individuals into a state where they are hypnotized. One of his most notable powers has to be alchemic absorption, which is what we see him do when Dee is normally wounded by Ray. With a mutant on its way to end Dee's life, Left Hand uses this ability to absorb the natural elements such as the earth, air, water, and fire to revive Dee from his comatose state. Consuming fire also comes with Left Hand being able to consume all forms of heat, and consuming water comes with the ability to absorb liquids such as blood. In one of the novels, Left Hand intervenes when hurricane winds become a threat to Dee, subsequently absorbing them to neutralize the threat. It can also absorb lightning, energy from detonated nukes, energy from antimatter reactors, particle beams from space cannons that are powerful enough to burst through asteroid belts, and even space itself. In one instance, Left Hand absorbed space and negated it when Dee was thrown into the Milky Way by the Elder God. For someone who can absorb such a thing, it's no surprise when it can absorb or devour evil souls and phantoms as well. In the film Bloodlust, Left Hand absorbs the soul of the final villain Carmilla. It is believed that an endless pocket dimension exists within the Left Hand, and that's where all the stuff goes once they're absorbed by the homunculus. The Hand can also invade the minds of whoever it touches and draw from their knowledge. Additionally, it can spit back the elements it has absorbed for offense. Despite its powers, Left Hand's skill set is quite different from that of Dee's, and while both beings are too powerful, it is better to not cooperate and collaborate at all times. It would have been a possibility if the Left Hand was an extension of the Dampier instead of being a separate sentient being. However, with Dee preferring to carry the workload on his own shoulders, the Left Hand knows that he should take the back seat in action. This mutual understanding between the two is exactly what makes their relationship so interesting. Marvelous Verdict The homunculus seems to care for the Dampier as the two have developed a strong friendship with each other. In a world where Dee doesn't fit in, no one knows and understands him better than Left Hand itself. Maybe that's why the brooding introvert doesn't mind the outspoken Left Hand's constant monologues or sarcastic jokes at all. The Hand also engages in mocking Dee from time to time, which depicts the depth of their friendship because the Hand feels comfortable enough to make fun of the Dampier, and the Dampier's excellent terms with the Hand allow him to not take the mockery too seriously. Bringing in another example, Sasuke Uchiha was the brooding introvert who hated other people having too much to say about him, but Naruto got away with saying anything and everything. This was, in fact, one of the elements that showed how deeply the two friends were bonded with one another. D and Left Hand are kind of similar, and no matter how much Left Hand makes fun of D, it is always there for its host, and frankly, that's adorable. With that, today's video comes to an end. What did you think of Vampire Hunter D and the Left Hand? Did you enjoy this video? If so, then don't forget to like and comment down below, and until next time, thanks for watching, stay safe out there, and have a marvelous day!